We're talking Harry Potter. We're talking Christmas. This week, we're gonna make some butterbeer. This is How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. I'm Greg, and I have never been a professional bartender. I've never even had a job in a bar. I don't worry too much about precision and technique, because at the end of the day, if the drink you like is in the glass, you did it right. Let's get going. I'm a fan of the books. I like the books. I haven't reread them, but I've read them. They were good books. I like the books. According to the Pottermore website, I, uh, I'm a Ravenclaw. I always thought of myself more of as a Durham Strang kind of guy. Uh, I would have been the male exchange student at the, uh, that other school, the, the one with the, 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 the ladies. What's that school? Bobatin. 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 It even rolls off the tongue. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yes. There's something about those movies, the sweaters, the scarves, the snow, I don't know what it is. There's something about them, even though they're not intentionally a Christmas movie, that really gets me into the Christmas spirit. With the holiday season approaching, we should make butterbeer. There's so many recipes for butterbeer out there. There are so many non-alcoholic, specifically non-alcoholic recipes that involve um, cream sugar and involve butter extract and butterscotch and all of these things to make a soda fountain drink that resembles uh, what we think of as butterbeer. And that makes a lot of sense, I get that. Um, I certainly wouldn't feed my kid alcohol either. If I'm not mistaken, the kids upgrade from pumpkin juice when they get to a certain age to butterbeer because they're finally old enough to drink butterbeer. Does anyone fancy a butterbeer? I feel like they kind of missed the part in the books where the kids were getting a little bit tipsy on it. Look, it says it's butterbeer and that it's weak alcohol, right? Doesn't it say that? And uh, the thing about butterbeer is that it's a real thing. It was a recipe. Uh, that was published, um, I think, in 1544. It's popular in Tudor courts of England um, as a kind of a meal component to make buttered beer or butter beer. Um, and we're gonna make that today. I don't know if she was specifically referencing this recipe from the 1540s, but I was shocked to discover that Nicholas Flamel was a real person who actually published a book about alchemy and making the Philosopher's Stone. As a matter of fact, they have copies of his book at the New York Public Library, the reference library in the rare books section. If you ask for, they give you special gloves, you can go read all that stuff. Um, just a regular fan though, just a regular fan of Harry Potter, not like a freak. So maybe she was, maybe she really did mean to reference this recipe. Uh, I haven't heard anything from her on it. You know, if she wants to give me the rowling bump and respond to this, let me know. JK, Joanne, Joey. I know that she approves of the butterbeer that's served down at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but she's contractually obliged to, so. Am I recording? Yeah. Now, I should say that we're gonna do a short cook on this. It has to be cooked um, and heated, but if you really wanted to make this recipe and make it non-alcoholic, an extra 20 or 40 minutes of simmering when we get to that part will burn off all the alcohol. It'll be a non-alcoholic beverage then. So to make butterbeer, we are gonna need a lot of weird ingredients. We're gonna need actual butter. This is beer with butter in it. That's a big component of it. Uh, we're not gonna use all this butter. That's mostly for display. We're gonna use one stick of this butter. We're gonna use one half stick of butter, four ounces of butter, or 100 grams of butter, depending on where you are. Uh, we're gonna need some demerara sugar. A light brown sugar would be okay too. If you can get dem demerara sugar, I would recommend that. That's gonna be more, um, the more the flavor profile that we're looking for. Uh, we're not gonna use all this either. We're gonna use about a cup of sugar. I'm not gonna measure too carefully on this one. We're gonna kind of fly by the seat of my pants. We're gonna need um, some spices. We're gonna need cloves and nutmeg and ginger. Uh, now the recipe I found calls for dried ginger um, and I actually think that's probably accurate. Probably in the 1500s, they would have used dried ginger, um, particularly in England where ginger I don't think grows very well. Uh, we have the option of using fresh ginger thanks to modern transportation and shipping technology, so why wouldn't we use fresh ginger? Oh, and you're gonna need ale and real ale. My best bet here for real ale was Samuel Smith's winter ale, uh, winter welcome ale. I think that's probably appropriate for this. It's, it's not like flavored or seasoned, it's just ale, yeah, right? There's no flavors in this. Stone fermented, uh, yeah, it's just ale. It's just ale with a, a, with a label on it to make you buy it around Christmas. Uh, we're all thirsty, but more to the point, we're very hungry. And what we're making is more of a liquid meal. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by throwing three pints of ale into this pot and simmering them. Each of these is a pint. Now I'm gonna discover, do three pints fit in this pot? I'm trying to not foam this as much as I can, but the reality is, Heat and beer, whatever carbonation exists in these bottles is gonna be gone, it's gonna foam up, it's just not really much of a way around it. I wanna take about, oh, an inch of this ginger and grate it into my uh, ale. You could peel it first, it's not really necessary when you're grating it like this. 
I want to take some nutmeg and grate that in. This is always tricky for me. I always shave my fingers. Definitely enough nutmeg. I mean, it's not like a real rocket science recipe. It's the flavors have to be right. We're not looking for a very specific balance. If this doesn't taste right in the glass, we can always change it in the glass. And I'm gonna put in six whole cloves and we're gonna heat that up. If I can remember how to turn this thing on. How do you work? There we go. So I got my induction cooker going here. I'm just gonna give that a little stir. Um, but we want to move quickly because we just want to heat this up. We are not trying to get that too hot. Uh, we don't want to boil it for very long because I'm going to try and keep some of the alcohol in here. I'm going to whisk together egg yolks. I need five egg yolks. And so we just want to whisk together those egg yolks and some sugar. About a cup of sugar. Very scientific cup there. Okay, so that's, those are light in color. That's pretty good. Um, you know what, just for the sake, you can see that's the color we're looking for. Kind of mustardy, right? Uh, let's see how hot my beer is. Warm. That's what I was going for. Delicious. We want to temper these eggs now a little bit with the beer. And that's just so that they don't really cook when they get introduced to the beer. So I'm going to set this real low. I actually might even bring that up a little bit warmer. And then I'm just going to start, I'm going to add some of this uh, mixture back to the eggs slowly and so now this is fully tempered and combined we're gonna take this pour it into the beer and add our butter I suppose in a perfect world I would pour the beer into this but I kind of want to keep everything on the heat and I don't I'm sure there exists such a thing a fancy fancy uh, stand mixer that's got a heating element involved but I don't own it so eggs go in and while I do this, we're gonna whisk a little lightly just to make sure everything stays nice and combined. The smell is just liquid Christmas. And now I need to melt an entire stick, a uh, half a stick of butter in there. Yeah. We're very hard. This is a sloppy show. So, I mean, we've got just beer batter here. You could throw this on French fries uh, probably right now or maybe some fish and chips. So I mentioned that this was a Tudor recipe as in Henry VIII. Have you seen any paintings of Henry VIII? Big fella. So I can feel that my butter is melted and our froth is good, but I, this is like kind of something you don't normally see, right? I have some stuff here that did not manage to make it into there and this pot is full. So I'm gonna transfer this back to here, let it mix itself a little bit, and then we're gonna serve this up. Oh, please don't be a big mistake. Not a big mistake. Um, and this is the first time I've had this, so hopefully it's pretty good. Stereo. Tracuna McCoides. Tricorum Satisti. We have butterbeer. It is hot, frothy. I happened to order this amazing mug just for the occasion. Let's serve myself some butterbeer and see how I like it. Wish I knew some good old... Tudor English drinking songs. One snapped into which was <laughs> Now, I know a little bit about these old hot Christmassy English beverages. Very few of them would get served without just an extra top up of nutmeg. They were nutmeg obsessed. So we'll just do that up there. Oh my God. So before I dive in, let me just say, this is beautiful. And two, this smells amazing. Wow, that's super good, holy shit. Okay, I might be in the minority who happens to like mulled hot beers, but this is really good. The smell is incredible. I mean, you can actually, I don't, feel like I normally would say that butter has a smell component, like a strong olfactory component, but here it really does. Just smells like delicious beer and butter and cooked eggs. I mean, it has like, it, it's got like a baking kind of quality, almost like a baked bread or um, a quiche, honestly. The ginger and the clove actually kind of, I wouldn't say they, I want to say they disappear, but not in the way that that sounds. They don't overpower the drink. 
Normally those are such potent flavors, ginger, clove, nutmeg less so, but certainly nutmeg, that they can easily become too much. I think this could even have more ginger. All it does is really take that beer and add to it um, that ale and add to it that nice Christmas spirit, that nice Christmas, um, those spices. I don't know what it is. I just want to sit with a book in my hand by a, a little smoldering fire and, and be alone. I honestly, I'm in serious danger of drinking this whole thing. There's such a creaminess to it, which of course there is. I mean, there's a friggin' half a stick of butter in there, but, and, and egg yolks, five of them, maybe six if we missed our count. That is great. It's fun to drink too, you know? I feel like a, I should be singing a song or a limerick. I don't know. And that's kind of the show, guys. We made real, legit Tudor butter beer. The kind of stuff that would grow a little extra hair on Hagrid's chest. Uh, if you could find a spot. <clears throat> Thank you guys for watching the show. That's how to drink. I hope you're having a great December. I hope you're having a great time. I hope you're having a wonderful Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. Uh, I hope that when it came to the feats of strength at Festivus that you were top man. I tweet at how to drink with the number two. I'm on Instagram at how to drink with the number two. I have a Patreon. Um, and if you really like the show and want to see a little extra, some behind the scenes, extended episodes, uh, the things that I can manage to put there. And I'll see you guys with a, uh, another drink next week on how to drink. As they say in jolly old England, happy Christmas. I'll see you guys next week in the room of requirement. It definitely is like nap time in a glass though. You just like, whew.